Hello and welcome back to BI Publisher Basics and Beyond. So in this chapter, we are going to look at an advanced topic called bursting. So we would, we would start with the basics and we would uh, take it one step at a time. So we would, the, the so our objective is to review XML bursting. Um, unfortunately, I will not be able to demonstrate it, uh, but I think it's simple enough uh, for you to try it out your own. As always, there will be files available for you to try out. I will also keep some additional uh, uh, real life samples uh, for you to test. So when we look at a report, so a delivery a report has three phases. The extraction phase, the formatting phase, and the delivery phase. So delivery is the final uh, phase of the report, but it's a critical element because different requirements, uh, you know, most of the time, you know, we can enable an emailing of the report. In some cases, you win, you would need to print the, print the report, you know, like, a, like an invoice, or in case of invoices, certain customers want to fax it or certain customers want to do an e-commerce uh, from the from the you know for the for, of the invoices so ultimately the report that's extracted would needs to be delivered in the right format so traditionally uh, a report is either delivered on a screen or a printer here with the bi publisher we are taking it one step further so from the same output, we are going to deliver it in multiple uh, multiple uh, delivery channels. For example, it can be a paper, it can be an email, it can be a fax. Everything is done through XML Publisher or BA Publisher using the bursting functionality. So BA, BA bursting is a powerful feature that's incorporated within the BA Publisher. Uh, it comes along with the uh, comes along with the BA Publisher. Uh, and, and you know it, it starts from XML Publisher version 5.6.3. Supports multi-channel, multi-facet delivery. Um, no coding. Everything is managed through the XML. Um, so you can you can use definitely Java to manipulate the data. I never had to try it. Uh, it's pretty simple using XML. You're using XML to deliver the output into different uh, delivery channels. So. Uh, bursting consists of three, so basically consists of three things. One is split the data into blocks. So once you've generated the XML, you have to split the data into different blocks. So that's done through, the, that's, a, that's a bursting functionality. Next is each block of data can ge should generate uh, documents. So for example, um, I have, you know, I have a, I have, a, I have, you know, I'm printing invoices. I mean, I'm basically uh, creating a report for all the open invoices. So for certain customers, um, you know, I want them to be emailed. Um, in those cases, I would each block or each invoices would each invoice would be a block for me, and I would generate the document based on the template definition, and I will deliver it based on the delivery preferences. Normally, these delivery preferences are stored at the customer level uh, or at some DFF. So let's uh, look at an output and let's take it. Let, let's analyze this output and take it to you know. Let, let's see how it, it's going to work out. So, so what we want to do, so we have an. If you look at this XML file, you can see there are uh, there are different uh, uh, sections of G department. Under the G department, it lists the employees and the salary. At the end, it'll it'll show the total salary of the employee. So, going back to the uh, previous slide, the, the first step is to split the data into blocks. So, in this case, we would need to split the data uh, based on the G department, based on this element G department. So, each G department would be uh, would be split into uh, you know into a separate chunk. So we, uh, you know we don't have to worry about it. This is how the internal link works. So e so what the BA bursting would do is first of all it's going to take each each of this G department and it's going to keep it as you know basically create separate files internally uh, from this uh, big XML output. So how does it work? The first step 
the XML output generates the XML output is generated from the concurrent program. It's then the, the BI bursting would then pick it up. First of all, it's, it'll split the data into multiple chunks. It will then take the data, the BI bursting engine would take the data and would merge with the template. We'll look at, you know, based on the template, based on how the document needs to be generated, it's going to generate the document and send it through the delivery channel. So these are the four steps that will happen uh, inside the BI bursting. So how does it happen? So how does it, so let, let's see, let's go through how many steps we need to do uh, to do, make it happen. First, the, before we, you know, I would say step zero, we would, we would generate the XML or uh, we have a mechanism to generate the XML through which, you know, it can be either a concurrent program. Ultimately, that's, it's a concurrent program that will generate it. St the first step would be to create, once, it, once the data is uh, created, second step is to create a bursting template. The bursting template will define how to split the data, which template to use to get the output, delivery methods, which delivery method is used to deliver the data. The second step would be to attach a bursting template to data definition. And step three, in the after report trigger, execute the uh, bursting concurrent program. The, the parameter for bursting XML bursting, it's bursting concurrent program is the request ID from the uh, parent uh, for which the data has to be uh, uh, data has to be bursted. So first step, um, we would we would first create the concurrent program. It's going to generate this uh, list of uh, basically customers. So for each customer, we are going to have invoices. So in this case, it will be multiple invoices in this customer. So for the first step, we've created the data. The second step is to create the bursting control file. So the bursting control file has three, four major components. The first is the request set, then is the request, then is the delivery method, and document. So a request set is a container that holds the multiple requests. Request would contain the split location, delivery, and document. Delivery specifies the delivery method. And finally, document that would tie the, the, the XML, uh, the, the XML to, the, to the doc, to the uh, template and to the delivery mechanism. So here is a simple, um, so we, let's go through, uh, we, we, the, first, the first step is to create a bursting. So let me, before we continue any further, let me open a bursting control file and we will just dissect it before we proceed. So here is a sample uh, bursting uh, XML. So if you look at it, the first step, the first part is the, uh, um, is the request set. So the request set is a, is a container that holds everything. Underneath the request set, you have request. So each, so you can have multiple requests within the request set. So under the request set, request you have a delivery, and then each delivery then is tied to different documents. So let's go ahead and expand all, and we will start from the top. So the request set is just a container. A request would 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 tell the BI bursting engine how do you split the data. So in this case, I'm saying I want I want to split the data based on the customers. So I have this I get the whole path to which you know how the data has to be split. So let's look at this uh, XML file before we proceed. So if you take this XML file, the bursting file, we are saying I want to split it by customers. So which is customer distribution at the top. I list G service period, service period, list customers, and list customers. So for each customer, it's repeating. So we want to split at this at this level. So for each customer, it's going to split. And it it's, it lists all the invoices and everything uh, within that uh, uh, within that customer block. So the next, so for the first we have, we're able to split it. Next step is the delivery. So how are we going to? What are the delivery method? So if you look at those, each delivery um, has its own uh, uh, header and foot. 
So in this particular case, I have a FTP uh, function that's being delivered. So it's going to deliver, I'm going to provide the server, you know, the user, the FTP server location, the directory, and I'm going to specify the file name. So the file, the remote file would be, it's going to take the account number and the service period. So if you look at it, it's going to be the account number and the service period from the GP service period. And it's going to be a PDF. And number of copies is one. And we also have another uh, delivery mechanism called a file system, which was just basically a file. So if you look, and so that's the second, that's the third part. The fourth part is a document. So if you look at these documents, it's going to generate documents um, uh, where, so first time, first it's going to create this file, it's going to call this X file, uh, file system. It's going to point to this uh, the delivery mechanism file. It's going to create the output at start user temp uh, group one. Um, you can use filter. Uh, if you look at it, if you, I'm using a filter. So if you look at the, I, I'm using a filter called report group, and I'm going to filter anything that's for report group one. So this is my uh, root uh, root level or the t the level, and I'm going to filter it for all customers with the group one. Let's look at that. So where group one would be under the, under the customers, I have a report group that would say group one. So I'm going to filter it for the uh, for those customers and for this one I'm for I'm basically I'm doing the same thing for group two the same uh, same information uh, I'm trying to see which one uh, which one I can use so at this time you're not getting into too complicated the idea so so far you have seen you know I think you have seen how, how the how the how the concept works so first thing you have to define how do you want to split the data Second is your delivery mechanism, and third is your document. The document will tell a point to which uh, delivery mechanism to be used. So coming back to our uh, our uh, presentation, so the first step is the request set. So we have defined the request set. So the request set is the container that holds everything. So we have a request set. So under the request set, then once the request set is defined, we have we will define the request. And which this request would tell how do we split the data? So here we're going to specify the customers. So here, if you look at the um, if you look at the uh, the customers, which is under let's G customers, G service periods, let's G service periods, and G customer distribution. So we're going to split by each customer. The next is the delivery mechanism. How do you want to deliver it? So you can deliver it either through an email fax or print or file system so either you know we're going to call different apis based on it um, so each api would have a different set of parameters to be passed in this case it's file system so i would i would specify the file location and the id this id uh, ties this to the um, so th we can refer this id when you create the document the third step is the, um, or the, the final step is the document the delivery method. So here, here we are going to tie the um, document to the delivery mechanism. And here we can specify the template location. So, you know, different customers can have different templates to be printed. So uh, you can, you know, so for example, some customers want to summarize everything. Some customers want a detailed report. You can control all these in the uh, in you know based on you can have different templates, and um, you can specify um, how do you how do you tie those things. Then finally, you have um, finally you have so we are, now we have connecting. Uh, we, we can you can access if you notice here you can access the uh, the output. Uh, you can you know sometimes you can say the customer number the transaction number you can refer it by using the syntax the, you can always refer the template location from the database you don't have to type it in the uh, in the file you can always use this query um, i'll attach this query within this uh, zip file so you can always download this query and try it out so the basic control file uh, you know you would look at it um, so you, you can when you refer the data template, you would refer it as XDO uh, source. You basically run the query and you'll get the same definition and you just type it in um, in here. 
So in this, uh, so I will take you through different uh, different types of uh, uh, deliveries uh, uh, bursting. The first one I have saved it as a uh, advanced to bursting control file. So here we are going to use. So we are here. We are going to use the file, and the ID should be file X Y Z. Let's look at the real sample. So uh, if you look at that same sample, I would I'm going to create the file uh, delivery mechanism file system. I'm going to tie it to the file system, and I'm going to create the output. I can specify the whole path here. So and I'm, I have a the path for the uh, RTF specified uh, directly. So that's the first example. So in the second uh, example, I would use a print as the uh, delivery method. And I would give the uh, uh, the print a printer lo the printer location, and uh, I would then tie the printer to the delivery, and make sure you have a unique. Uh, you know, make sure this is very important. The output file has to be unique. So if you create two uh, two files with the same name, it's going to fail. But um, you, you would generate the file, and it will be printed automatically. So we, how about we adding faxing? It's a similar concept. We'll use fax, and um, uh, we can. Here's a syntax for using fax. Um, you would specify the fax, IPP fax, uh, and you tie that to the output. Similar with the email, uh, you would uh, tie the email server. Uh, you would have the ID for the email. So once you tie that, you would deliver it as an email. So the, you can see the you know the message ID is the ID is uh, email, and then email is tied to the email delivery. So I have um, so you know so you can see um, you know it, it delivers the output in the right format, and there's a status report from bursting. It'll tell you what happened. So how do you find the email server? There is a there's a profile called OK as SMT host. You can always find the uh, mail server from there. So FTP is a similar way. So I mean, once you see the concept, it's basically the same. So I'm going to I'm going to uh, attach all these files in the zip file. You can download it and uh, try it. So um, you may have to try it out to figure it out. So um, you know, start with the uh, start start with your data definition and um, create your XML file. And your template, then you start adding the bursting control file. And when you start with the file, then you build on to it. Um, so um, I think that's pretty much it for the simple way of bursting. Um, I would have one more chapter which would give you more uh, advanced features. So the, the so I hope you got a good idea about how to burst. And I have a uh, quite a few samples attached in that uh, zip file. Feel free to download. Feel free to download them and try it out. Thank you.